Peekaboo, peek-a, peek-a, peek-a-boo, peek-a-boo, peek-a-boo. King Hugo's huge ego. He thinks an awful lot of himself, and he's not shy about sharing that information, but maybe he's made some bad choices. King Hugo's Huge Ego was written and illustrated by Chris Van Dusen, and this book was published by Candlewick, Candlewick Press. Here we go, friends. Long ago, when people spoke with words like thou and thee, there lived a king named Hugo, who was only three foot three. And though this mini monarch stood no higher than an elf, his ego was enormous. He thought highly of himself. Yes, Hugo was a cocky king, as boastful as could be. To him, no other person was as wonderful as he. He made his subjects bow to him whenever he was nigh. It pleased him to look down on them each time that he went by. And every Friday morning, at precisely half past ten, his guards called all the people to the tower base and then... King Hugo cleared his throat and gave his captive congregation a lengthy talk he liked to call the speech of adoration. For hours, the poor villagers endured the boring buzz of how mighty and magnificent King Hugo thought he was. <clears throat> One day... King Hugo climbed aboard his coach of gleaming gold to watch the peasants bow to him as down the road he rolled. But when he turned a corner by a field of amber hay, a maiden with a heavy load was blocking up the way. The heralds blew their trumpets, then called out to the last, step aside and bow your head, allow the king to pass. The girl, whose name was Tessa, said bluntly, go around. She didn't want to drop her load and bow down on the ground. The king began to rant and rave and spout and spit and sputter. Roll on, he barked, and then they bumped poor Tessa to the gutter. She landed in a rivulet. Oh, what a muddy mess. But little did King Hugo know she was a sorceress, the kind with special powers, like a wizard or a witch. So she cast a spell upon the king while mired in the ditch. Ah, pox on you, O oh cocky king, in robes of ruby red. Let's see if all your arrogance can fit inside your head. The next day, when the king awoke, he climbed down from his bed and gazed into his looking glass, admiring, and said, I do believe, dear Hugo, you're more handsome than last night. But when he put his crown back on, it felt a little tight. Then he donned his crimson robe, the one with crimson fringe, ermine fringe. How grand I am, the king exclaimed, then felt a little twinge. His crown seemed even tighter now, yet Hugo didn't care. He hollered from his window to the people in the square. Say, who's the most majestic king? Tis I, you must admit. But when he pulled his head back in, it almost didn't fit. Every time he claimed to be the greatest in the land, the king perceived a tingle and felt his head expand. But he continued bragging in his overstated way, and so his head kept bloating, bulging bigger every day. By Friday, 
Hugo's head was huge, but still he didn't know that his self-directed compliments had caused his head to grow. His speech of adoration was scheduled as before, but when he reached the tower, he could not fit through the door. He marched across the courtyard to climb the open stair, then called the people to the wall and gave his speech from there. Behold, my lowly subjects, and do not doubt thine eyes, for yea, my noble noggin has increased tenfold in size. I know not how this happened, but now there's even more of your absolutely fabulous King Hugo to adore. The more he talked, the more he grew, till suddenly a squall hit the king's gigantic head and pitched him off the wall. He floated freely through the air, then landed with a thud. He bobbed and dipped and flipped and skipped and toppled through the mud. He tumbled topsy-turvy as he bounced along the lane and ended up by Tessa, who was busy stacking grain. King Hugo's head was spinning. He felt dizzy, dazed, and beat. But when he noticed Tessa, he yelled, Get me to my feet! Tessa wandered over. Unbelievable, she sighed. Did you ever stop to wonder why your head is ten feet wide? It's your ego. It's annoying. So I cast a little spell, and every pompous thing you've said has caused your head to swell. That's ludicrous, ridiculous, preposterous, insane. I'm humbler than anyone, the king snapped in disdain. I'll prove it to you, she replied. You've been this way for years. Just listen, ordered Tessa. Then she grabbed and tweaked his ears. Suddenly, a blast of air exploded from his head, along with all the haughty things King Hugo'd ever said. King Hugo's head deflated like a giant pink balloon, and when he heard what he had said, he felt like a buffoon. Sheepishly, he said to her, I do apologize. Then he looked at Tessa with his big, sad puppy eyes. Their glances met, and instantly she felt her heart go zing. Could it be, deep down inside, she kind of liked the king? The king got up, he took her hand, and bent down on his knee. He gazed at her with tenderness, then spoke most humbly. Your spell has opened up my eyes. I've been unkind and rude. Please stay with me and teach me how to change my attitude. What happened next was kismet. Yet truly unforeseen, he became a better man, and she became a queen. They ruled the kingdom kindly in a fair and friendly way, and everyone lived happily forever and a day. The end. Whew, that was quite a ride, King Hugo. I miss you, friends. Mm-hmm.